Radio. Today again we welcome the wonderful Elvis and to let us know a few what's going on in the UK. Um, Brexit is coming closer, all seems to be falling apart, but I actually do believe they will get through it and I do believe there will be no deal and I do think it will be the best decision the UK will make. Hopefully they'll get through it. And all the jihadi brides back from coming into Ireland and the United Kingdom, treacherous governments, mm -hmm. trying to bring them in, harboring terrorists, making us a legitimate target. Not to count about the amount of terrorist acts that they, they, that they did in whatever countries that they were in, who knows what they were doing? Beheading, being involved in beheading, torturing idiot women, uh, Christians, who knows? And they want to bring them back in here when they admittedly have said that the ISIS war isn't over. So what are they bringing them back in for when they actually know what, and this is what they've said, that they're going to bring it back here to our countries. So why? Even though the one, Lisa Smith, is an indigenous Irish, but I don't care, she made her bed. Nobody told her to go to a foreign country and persecute and torture Christians or be part of it or so-called what they like to give it a nice name supporting as if they were just standing cheerleaders like insane absolutely insane so good morning Elvis it's a beautiful day here how's good it in your end morning. lucky you we got we got a gray and very miserable weather actually yeah yeah thank you for having me again good morning to all um coming yeah, you are right. You are right. We got globally the government's majority of them, not all, but majority of them, hands in hand, betraying their people, betraying the nation. Bunch of devil worshippers, as I was watching one right now, that the um, sort of Satanism all over the place, including Vatican and uh, how the devil has stepped inside the Vatican as well as governmental offices, literally everywhere, everywhere, from, from banks to finance offices to you name it, you name it. We are struggling with this bunch of corrupt Satanists, basically. I, I haven't got anything else for them. That's the fact, I believe. Yeah. And poor people suffering. We got... Jihad is welcomed home. Absolutely yeah. insane. I cannot understand it. Absolutely yeah. cannot understand why governments have decided to harbour terrorists. Let, yeah. Let's see what government yeah. deal with it. I'll, I'll come to it in a minute. Uh, basically, um, the signs are all over the place, you know, and uh, all it is, you have to open your eyes and see around yourself. Well, it is, we've got, we've got Jihad is welcomed back home. Or if, in in case of uh, this Shamima Begum, that uh, recently said she lost her third baby, and we haven't seen any baby, we yeah. haven't seen nobody's seen any baby. She literally got something. That. Up. that is a true true news. I think it's all made up. And this woman, she's basically she knows the psychology of Brits and uh, literally the Europeans. So they, she knows that they are a bit sensitive about the kids. And what she's doing, she's playing it, literally. I don't believe if any... Because, look, she has lost three babies, yeah? How come? What's the, what, I mean, how that can be happening, yeah? Yeah. Not once or once. And the, the last one just died after the Home Secretary stripped her from her nationality. And yeah. Uh, you can see, basically, attention, attention, look at me, I'm here, I lost my baby, cry for me a bit, you know, I'm a poor girl, being deceived. No, none of them is fact, but anyway. I wouldn't care less. She made her bed, she made a decision, she was yeah. a grown woman, her, you know, what, what did she do to the Eddie's women? What was she doing there towards the Christians, supporting let's, this group? Let's, and the let's, only thing I'd have to say in her defence, she was born into the Smith cult. The one, Lisa Smith, has no excuse. She wasn't even born into that. So for her to, to join it and actually be involved 
in beheading or whatever they were doing. But, you know, and sex slavery for the Eddie's woman, she has absolutely no excuse. And I would definitely say neither of them to come back. The other one should lose her. So, but, but the Irish one, she should be just dealt with, given to Syrian government. Because it was there she went over to, and it's now there. there. It's up to them to deal with her. And they should deal with her. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. Well, given the death sentence, if I had my way, absolutely disgraceful what what happened to to Yiddish women being tortured and Christians. That's right. You see, we got we got British soldiers, actually a number of them, yeah, who went voluntarily fought against ISIS with the backed up either British or American forces, which are the courts in main, uh, in general, against ISIS. And guess what happened? One of these guys, when he came back, he was arrested. Now he's in prison, Belmarsh prison, the full security uh, prison, because he fought against ISIS. It's crazy. I just don't understand. What yeah. the hell? And somebody who who's basically proven that he was with ISIS, he was killing, murdering people, beheading people, now they're coming back and say, oh, they're British or they're Irish or they're this, that. We, we have to, uh, you know, forgive him and bring him back. No. No, it's not such a thing. Let me see. Let me see. Now we, we got people mainly in the Labour Party, yeah? One of them was that stupid Darren Abbott. Hmm? Apparently he's no. he's lost so many votes, so yeah. he's like pretty much out. Um, Jeremy Corbett has destroyed yeah. the Labour Party. A total dumb woman who can't even give you the result of uh, how uh, how much is the two plus two. Yeah, mm. you can't even say it's four. Yeah, she's that dumb, right? Yeah. She was in the um, in the Parliament defending Shemama Begum. That she is British, she got to come back, and her child, or her poor woman, she lost the baby, and is all Home Secretary's fault that uh, she lost the baby, right? I got a few questions in here, right? They say she was a she was a young girl, she was a child, yeah. In this case, a girl who was that at the time she left, she was fifteen. Now she's 19, yeah? A child. But when it comes to Islam, they say six years old Aisha was mature and she wasn't a child, yeah? So hold on a minute. Is she a child or isn't she a child? I don't think if she's a child, yeah? She was 15. Absolutely crazy. Can you remember anything going on with this crap with the IRA? Would they be saying, oh, you know what? Just because they did the Birmingham bombing or whatever in London, let's bring them back to Ireland. They are Irish citizens. And, she justified, you know, she justified well, uh, uh, Manchester, yeah? I mean, the British government wouldn't have allowed it. They would have arrested them. They would have caused war if the, if the Irish were going, oh, you know, we're bringing them back in. It's absolutely crazy. I don't understand what is going on. If you remember back, when was it? A couple of months ago, or last month, we were talking about why governments embracing Islam. What is the mentality? What is the madness in it? And I did explain, yeah, possibly this is the repeat, but for those who didn't hear it, is this, that these governments, they embracing Islam because it called the philosophy of it, the system, the structure of it, it perfectly matches what they're looking for and what they are actually, yeah? I got a few selection, again, from the Quran, from the Hadith, and one of them, it, let me start with this one, that see how uh, Islam thinking about us and how we treating them, how we basically believed are um, use, um, uh, peaceful, you know, people, and they got no problem with us. This is from the Hadith, right? And it says the verse, you, in the bracket, true Muslims, are the best of the people ever raised up for mankind. Hmm? 
This is what Muhammad says. Means the best of peoples for the people. As you bring them, bring them, it means who? Non-believers, it means Christian, Jews, and, and the rest. With the chains on their neck, will they embrace Islam? Till, sorry, till they embrace Islam. Yeah? As you can see, governments, they have given up completely to Islam because Islam is that perfect tool. Yeah? Islam is this, as some people say, religion, but it's not a religion. I don't believe it is a religion because religion is usually talking about the peace and uh, love and sort of harmony. While Islam, 109 verses out of 114 is about the destruction, murder, killing, you know, and nothing else. Yeah? Um, Islam is the system, is the um, cult, some people say, it, but I believe it's a system, is the military social system that literally having a total control on people. And what, what our governments now they doing, our governments creating these ideologies, yeah, and the ideologies controlling the mind of people. Hmm? You see, we got we got socialism, yeah, we got um, I don't know all kind of political um, movements, yeah, ideologies. And you can see how the, and the left is one of them that actually embracing Islam because it's very close to what they believe. Or they taking each other as a useful idiot. Hmm? And at the end, the left don't know that actually Islam will destroy him as they did in Iran in, uh, in the revolution of 1979. The exact thing happened. A socialist, they left embrace Islam and they say let's let's help each other to bring down the topple down the Shah of Iran and the Khomeini actually welcomed the idea but at the end what happened five days after they settled down five days only after that he ordered to kill all the uh, lefties hmm? and they did is resulted 150,000 people executed and hundred thousand in the in the in the prison. That's what happened. And if we don't learn from this any of these lessons, it's going to happen here, which you know it will happen. Trust me. So the Islam is the perfect tool for the for the these people because it's a, first of all is so rough and satanic. To, to to be honest with you, I would call it satanic. Yeah. If a religion talk about killing whoever is is not believing in such a way, then I got no no any other name for it. I will call it satanic. Yeah. Listen to this one. It is actually is one of the examples. So when when you meet those who disbelieves in the bracket in the battle, strike their necks until when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, slaughter upon them, not love, not hug, not kisses, slaughter, then secure their bonds and either confer favor afterwards or ransom. Look at this. It's about ransom, it's about <laughs> slaughter, how you call this holy? Hmm? Anyway, ransom them until the war lays down its burdens. That is the, is the command, yeah, in the bracket. And if Allah had willed, he could have taken vengeance upon them himself, but he ordered, he ordered armed struggle. To rest some of you for beans and uh, uh, anyway, all the sort of rest of the rubbish. Yeah? So, 
Can you see? It, it's all about murder of killing the Christians, Jews, non-believers. Anyway, he doesn't fit yeah. into their way, their way or death, and the horrific death of that. So, you see, but I was giving an example of when they favoring Islam is not because of this satanic attitude, yeah, and satanic commands. If you remember, uh, some time ago, it was the 30th anniversary of that satanic verses, yeah, by Salman Rushdie. Which is actually, it, it's a fact and it's a truth. This man, he just said, he told the truth. Actually, we got the satanic verses in the Quran, yeah, which was basically deleted, taken off. But Islam, Khomeini actually, by the name of Islam, he could win over the 57 million at the time uh, people of Iran. And after 40 years, still they are in charge and command. Yeah? They can control the mind of people because people are religious. Yeah? And their mind, literally everything, as I said, Islam is the social system as well as military system, financial system. Hmm? We had a, um, a communism and the left dominated the universities and even some of the offices. Yeah, People, people were, uh, young people especially, they believed in, uh, in communism. Yeah, And the news was in the hands of Khomeini that, look, the youngsters, especially in universities, they um, mainly following the communism. So we have to do something about it. All Khomeini did came with a bit of a soft message and kind of approaching people saying, you sacrificed your beloved one. And now these youngsters, these stupid youngsters, they they following communism, which doesn't believe in God, yeah, or Allah. So it's your duty to report them. And guess what? Everybody, even mothers, they reported their own son or sons. In some cases, sisters, their brothers, fathers, their sons, they did, and they were executed. Mm -hmm. shortly after. Can you see oh. how Islam is in, in charge? This is what West and the, our government been looking for, something that they can control the mind and act of people. They can just come and say, look, is your religious, is your Islamic duty to do that? This is what Khomeini said to people. Is this your Islamic duty to report these people? Because they, they are against Allah. Yeah? So they did. Simple as that. You don't need the MI5. You don't need the MI6. You don't need any intelligence services. You don't need a CIA. You just come and tell people, look, this is your Islamic duty. And you have to do this. Is your Islamic duty to bring your money and give it to the government? Like, where are they actually thinking, bringing terrorism in? And their excuses are, aren't even excuses. The excuse the Irish one was, um, they shouldn't be anybody else's problem. But excuse me, they went over to someone else's country. Let that other country take care of them. And whether that country decides that that's a death penalty, well, that was that person's choice that they took. Not, not we. Why should we take, take it on board? They, they decided to go to that country, to a foreign country like Lisa Smith, which has nothing to do with Ireland, get involved in terrorist organisation. Yeah, I do think Syria should, should take care of her. And whatever way they think it's necessary, because it was their people that she put in danger, along with others. And it would teach them all not to do it again, rather than bringing them over. And her parents on and saying, oh, you know, we just w want her back safely. What about everybody else's lives she put in danger? And what about the lives of she will put in danger when she's back in Ireland? No, absolutely not. This is, part of the, this is part of the plan, you see. This is part of the plan. And this is something when, when he started, I believe, 
I was listening to um, this thing that they call it silencing Christians. You see, when you're talking about Antichrist, yeah, I, actually this has been mentioned even in Quran. When they say the Jal, the Jal is the is the devil, is a Satan. In a, in a translation, they say Antichrist. They not say Anti Moses, Anti Muhammad, Anti Buddha, Antichrist. Because the Christ is the truth and the fact, yeah? So, you see, the Islam is being truth. I mean, I mean, this is another verse, let's say, yeah? We will cause terror in the hearts of those who disbelieve for what they have associated with Allah, of which he had not sent them, yeah? Authority. You see... The whole book, if you read it, is about terror, killing, murdering, bloodshedding, and is nothing else. Yeah. So this is why the West is it's, it's um, picking up because uh, Muhammad actually said, "I've been made victorious through terror." Right, and they they can see it's 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 working. Literally, the, the terror is working. Look, when it comes to Muslims, yeah, yeah, you can see the Western government showing surrender. They withdrawing because they are afraid. Like, One of the what is a Mormon surrender? Afraid. Like, absolutely, I don't know what you could call this. This is actually inviting terrorism into their country and encouraging terrorism into their country to kill people like there is nothing and he knows when that lisa smith comes back in here she has already said the isis fight is not over so what do you think is going to happen she's going to be start planning terrorist attacks here in ireland on let the irish you, people let me tell you what is about the isis yeah these people if they haven't been killed fully we saw the, the image of their wives they were still inciting ISIS and Islam, and they were saying, we are not finished, we are still here. Yeah, they are still here. You see, you, you can kill a person, you cannot kill the ideology. This ideology is flowing, it's like a disease, epidemic disease, is flowing between the people, an ideology is nothing you can see, is in the head, hidden. You cannot find out, you know, unless your experience or your knowledge or you know the person. Hmm? You cannot look at this Muslim and say whether he is a supporter of ISIS or not. Hmm? And you know, there is something more even uh, sophisticated. It's called tariya. It means they lie. They are allowed to lie. Hmm? Legally, yeah. well, legally in their Sharia law, basically legal way, yeah? And religiously, they can stand in front of your, you know, eyes and lie. Smile in the face of non-believers while in the heart you curse them. This is one of the things, one of the examples, right? So, this religion, these Muslims... They are so sophisticated and, and difficult uh, thing to deal with, yeah, because they are not honest and they are united in religion. The religion actually unites them together, which actually I've got another thing I can hear, I can uh, say, is the unity of Muslim against non-believers, yeah, and it says Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those with him are forceful against the disbelievers, merciful amongst themselves. You will see them bowing and prostrating in prayers, seeking bounty from Allah and his pleasure. Their mark is on their faces, yeah, from the trace of prostration. If you see these Pakistanis and stuff, they, most of them, they got the black mark on their forehead. This is what he's talking about. 
their mark is on their faces from the trace of prostration. Yeah? That's what he's talking about. So they, they know each other through that mark. Can you see? The mark of the beast is actually in their forehead. Mm -hmm. That is their description in the, in the Torah. And the description in the gospel is as a plant which pro, uh, produces its offshoots and uh, strengthens them so they grow firm and stand on their stalks. Yeah? So this is, this is the command from Muhammad that stand and unite against the disbelievers, which is sort of talking about the Christian and Jews. So the, when they come here, some people still they call in a moderate Muslim. There is no moderate. There is no uh, weak Muslim, strong Muslim. They are Muslim. The only difference between these two people is that those who we call them moderate, they don't know the religion. Hmm? But if you talk to them, you can see they come strong defending Islam. Yeah? And you can see the transformation. If you don't believe me, whoever you call, um, you believe is a, is a moderate Muslim, go and say, I believe Muhammad was a pedophile. And look at the reaction. You just try him. You don't believe me? Try him. See what the reaction will be. Then I can, I can prove it to you that there is no moderate. The only difference is don't they don't know the religion. They don't practice it as much. But the minute they started um, reading the book, he will be the same as the ISIS. That is the difference. It's a crazy time we're living in, though, Al. It's a really, really crazy time. I just, it's just shocking. I suppose I just really can't believe how low the government's gone to horror known terrorists who have committed horrible, horrible deeds in another country and they actually suggesting to bring them back to do those horrible deeds in our countries. It is quite shocking the level of hatred towards the people. Yeah. If they would actually even think that this is any way, for any reason, a good idea. It, it's really, really, it, it's dangerous and scary times we're in. It is sad. It is really sad when you see people who are trying to defend these soldiers, trying to defend their people, defend the, defend the innocent. They go in fighting with the Kurdish people, um, sort of against ISIS, or going to Syria, or going to Iraq to fight ISIS. Hmm? They come back here and get arrested. You feel sad when you see elderly, those people who sacrificed their lives during the Second World War, during the, I mean, even after the wars, even now, yeah? Some pensioners who deserve to be in a house, nice and warm and protected, yeah? After a lifetime, they've been working and giving to their society and their country. Homeless. And some enemy of the state, enemy of this nation, enemy of literally anybody, yeah? They come in, in less than a week, less than a week, in few days even. They've been offered the most luxurious flats. Yeah? In a possibly, some of them, in, a, in the best areas you can possibly dream of, yeah? They get the flat, they get the... A, a, a school for their children while the English people got to take their kids miles away in such a unsafe situation that we got, especially nowadays, you know, kind of, we, we, I don't know whether you heard about the stabbing and literally rate of uh, killing in, in, in London recently. In such an unsafe society and community, yeah, they have to take their kids miles away to a school, possibly another borough, yeah? 
while the Muslim people feeding their kids in the, in the schools with no problem. This is unfair. This is literally giving your priorities first instead of giving it to your people, giving it to others. I don't I don't know what 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 to call this. I don't know how people can put up with this. I really don't. Because if this thing was happening in the country of the same Muslim people, yeah, they would have a revolution. They would they would raise and set fire to their government and all the sort of foreign nations. Why do we put yeah. up with them here? Yeah. And even we defending them in some cases. It's funny. People who are suffering, if you go and say Muslim, the first slap in your mouth will be coming from the English person. Why are you racist against them? I don't understand this. Yeah, it's just getting worse. As I said, it's the left that are the real problem. I, I do believe Islam is thick, an evil cult, but if it wasn't for the left, it wouldn't be a problem. It's the left who are encouraging it, even when it comes to jihadis, bringing them back into our countries to kill us. And there is no doubt in my mind now that the government are trying to kill us. There is no reason why you bring back jihadis. Absolutely, unless you want the, the, the actual people dead. So, you know, it is the left, really, that is the enemy. Because without the left, they're pretty powerless. Yes, and unfortunately, the, example, the example of it, if you, if you see, for example, in the Labour Party in here, right? Labour Party now becoming a Muslim party. Basically, majority of them are Muslim. Yeah, and the supporters are Muslim. Jeremy Corbyn is out of power pretty much the next election. He yeah. lost so much vote. You see, look at the stupid uh, strategy of these lefties. Look at how stupid he goes. They thinking if we bring the these Muslim people, which actually in some areas majority, and they you know sort of helping to world labors. Yeah, so we can stay in power. No, you idiots. No, you can't stay in power forever. For, for the time being, the Muslim is voting you, even joining you. Yeah? Simple as that. Hmm? While they getting power, hmm? look at the um, example of a Minnesota that this um, Somali girl now sort of got to the parliament, to the Senate of, of United States. Yeah? She's she's talking hatred against the Israel and the even American people in some cases. Yeah, oh yeah, she said she will not assimilate in. It's like what the hell? <clears throat> yeah. So what's happening is you see they using these parties, joining them, voting them, no problem. Yeah? Up until they get to the power. But the the thing is Jeremy Corbyn or the Labour Party, they might get the power now or the uh, vote now, but it's not going to stay forever because the minute they the Muslim get the majority, then first they're going to hang the Jeremy Corbyn in front of the, uh, the Parliament to start with. None of these people, you see, they're using them as a, what they, what we call them useful idiots. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's yeah. enough of them idiots. They are suicidal for some of them. And others, I don't know. It's like Leo is gay. Like, what does he think? Like, he's, he's also said, you know, Islam has brought great things for Ireland. Like, what, Leo? What is this one? But, no, he said, sorry, Islam has made Ireland a better place. Like, what? Seriously. Yeah, just That's give me an example. Said. Just give me an example. Why is it a better place? Exactly. Nothing. Because is it's it safer? It's not. Or women in black bags? I'm not sure what he thinks is a better place. Yeah. Don't just come and throw something in the middle. Yeah? It's a better place. Give me an give me example. Give me fact and figures. How many percent of those Muslims are working there? How many pers What percentage of Muslims join the army? What percentage of Muslim join the police? What percentage of Muslim 
committing something, doing something, giving something to the country. Hmm? Give me examples. Why is the better place? Why is the better place? The since I mean, if you come to London, for example, yeah. If you, let's say, sit in any buses, yeah, go on the board of any bus, you know, public transport. See the felt is is worse than you know, kind of the worst Middle Eastern country, and go on the bus. Smell the people literally throwing everything on the seat. They eat and they leave it on the seat. Felt, dirt, everything. Even it was a video of this, I don't know whether she was Caribbean or African or something, yeah? This lady, she sat and literally urinated inside the bus while people on board. Oh, I don't know, they're so disgusting. But, you know, actually he's insulted the Irish people. It's like as if Ireland wasn't a better place without Muslims. He's also said he prefers uh, immigrants because they pay more taxes and are hard working. His hatred for the Irish people knows no bounds. And now his latest thing is to bring jihadis back to kill us. He is a disgusting, horrible human being. Like, I, I don't really like your government, but Jesus, Leo, ten times topples over anything she does. He absolutely cannot even hide his hatred for the Irish people. You see, we people, either there in, 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 in Ireland or here, when they say they paying their taxes and they doing is better place, I would say, can you give me some example? Yeah. How many, how many immigrants you got? Yeah. And what percentage of them paying taxes? That's a very little of them. Yeah. Can you tell me how what percentage of them paying taxes and what percentage of them on on, on the benefit? Can you give us example? Be a man, Leo. Be a man, Miss May, and give us examples, facts and figures. Not just bloody throw something. Is a better place with Muslim. Why? Can you give me example? Can you give me reason? They can't. Because the, the fact is, yeah, I'm not saying not all of them, you know, kind of sitting on their backside. Yeah, I can see some, for example, Somalis working in the shop or something, but basic jobs. Yeah. More, most, uh, I mean, in some cases, I would say, because they would say, I'm a low paid, possibly not even. Uh, Paying tax or paying very little tax. But this is just a cover up, just to say, look, I'm working. Yeah, but what are you doing? What are you doing? What kind of a job is it? Why that job is not going to an uh, a, a English guy? Yeah? You see, they're filling the jobs. Yeah? Uh, they call them uh, something paper, paper something. Um, Throwing something. It's like some time ago, there was a company saying, We got the shortages of engineers. Yeah? I can show you numbers of even people I knew from the university when I was studying. Yeah? They qualified engineers, they couldn't get a job because every company they applied, they said, We, we want somebody with a. Um, with experience, five years experience. The majority of them, they had to drop, do something, work in a shop, work in a post office, whatever, because they couldn't get a job. While the government can and say, you know, we are, we got a shortage of engineers, we got a shortage of architects, we got a shortage of... So? They discovered 180 taxi men who are illegal, not from the EU, no, no rights to be here, and all got taxi license. Now, they're all drug dealing. They're all North African is Muslims, and they're all drug dealing. So much for the bloody religion even being sacred. They're all bloody drug dealing in taxis. All illegal. And all Irish taxi men have to pay a fortune for these um, licenses. Same here. Same here. Criminality. To be qualified, 
to become a, a mini uh, sorry the black cab driver you have to pass the very very extremely difficult test right and it takes years for any of these black cab drivers to to gain that uh, certificate right and now we got a bunch of immigrants from i don't know romania from uh, from syria from iraq yeah. We got the tricycles. We got the tricycles, just like Bombay. Hmm? And right in the middle of the Oxford Street, the most sort of iconic and prestigious street in the UK, famous around the world, yeah? We got these idiots, tricycles, that they charging quite a lot. In some cases, it was a, even, it was a thing on the news, newspapers. Uh, this American tourist, American gentleman, who was regularly coming visiting, so he knew about, you know, UK and London enough. One of these tricycles taking him from, let's say, Marblanche to middle of the Oxford, Street, Oxford Street, which is not a lot of distance, yeah? And he asked him, how much is it? And he said, 250 pounds. And he said, what? talking about he said yeah yeah it's 250 pounds he said you think i'm stupid crazy Holy and the worst part about these taxi men most of them end up with criminal records some of them are pedophile sex offenders and they were out driving irish bought taxi license how they got them or did they buy them but nobody mm -hmm. knows that it's impossible for irish men to get taxi license they cost an absolute fortune but these were able to get them, God knows how. And some of them had illegal alias names, so they had like they'd taken someone else's name, basically. It is absolutely insane. Um, and nothing being done. And my God, all the Irish people would have been able to tell you this. The government's completely ignoring it. Yeah, I mean, we got we got Uber, for example, yeah. And I heard from the one of the very trustable sources that the uber drivers not only in raping some of the girls yeah they also involve in drug trafficking and prostitution they literally taking prostitutes from from location to location so you tell me where are we heading to yeah More trafficking women all sorts of stuff it, it's there's no surprise. That's what they do in their own country. I mean, I was talking to another girl I was interviewing her, and I said, well, what can you expect? This is what they do in their own countries. You can't take the third world in and expect them to change just because you've moved the, the allocation of where they live. Their mindset is still the same. You see, we, we are talking about something constantly. We, we hear it, yeah? Um, you, can, you can hear, they, they keep saying, integration. Multiculture, diversity. I'm so sick of those words. If I hear them again, I'm going to get sick. So sick of them. Every sentence the government says, come out with bullshit. They're calling about de-radicalization. Yeah. Let me read. Let me read a couple of things from the Quran again. Yeah, from the Hadith and Quran. Yeah. One of them talking about, as I I think said it before, is um, says. We will cause terror in the hearts of those who disbelieve for what they have associated with. Yeah, so this is the this is the name of the terror in the something they call it holy holy book book from God. No, no, it can't be from God. This is this is order of terror. Yes, you cause terror in the heart of non-believers. Yeah, listen to this one, and even say do not ask question if you. If you have noticed, when you when you pass something uh, a question to Muslims, if they don't know, they say Allah knows better. Yeah, do not ask question. Cannot ask why is that, and they don't. All you have believed. Do not ask about things which, if they are shown to you, will distress you. But if you ask about them while the Qur'an is being revealed, they will be shown to you. This is, this is an example 
of hypocrisy and lie and deceive in the Quran, yeah, is also saying, do not, look, this one, these people coming to our country, yeah, they come into our country while they be told you are not allowed to have friendship with, with the Christian and Jews. All you have this all you have believed, do not take the Jews and the Christian as allies. They are in fact allies of one another. And whoever is an ally to them amongst you, then indeed he is one of them. So can you see the can you see the example documented? These people come passing between countries to get to our land. Hmm? They say, I'm a refugee. Why did you come to my land? If you, you have been told you are, you are not allowed to associate with me, you are not allowed to have friendship with me, you are not allowed to have any sort of, you can't be ally to me. How you can be here? So this is, this is the proof that is a lie, is a deceit, and they are here to use us and invade our land and country. You cannot integrate this person. If any of these people say, I'm a Muslim, then look, he's following this book, he's following these orders. They cannot be de-radicalized, as you're saying, because these people using this book as a daily basis guide to their life, yeah? They read it every day, and they follow it. They are not like us. We go once a week in a church, and sort of hardly anybody has read, read the Bible, you know, once in a lifetime, yeah? Look, order of killing and uh, murdering Christians. Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but that they have been killed or crucified. Can, can you hear that? Crucified. So when the, when the ISIS crucified the people, actually, they, people, Muslims say, no, they are not Muslim. We not do that. Yeah, we don't do it. We're not told to do such a thing. No, they are, these people, ISIS, they are not Muslim. No, they are idiots. Look at this. Killed or crucified. Or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite side, or that they be exiled from the land. While they've been ordered to exile us from their land, as Muhammad said, he said, I will clear the Arabian Peninsula from the Jews and Christians, leave nothing but Muslims. This is the examples of our stupidity. That while these people <coughs> trying to clean us from their land, yeah, completely wipe us out. They don't want us, they don't love us, they don't like us, nothing. They don't believe us, yeah? yeah. Look at the daily basis, I mean, is every day happening, but none of these mainstream media is talking about it. Hmm? It's happening in Egypt. Christian being being attacked, raped, murdered, their churches being uh, sort of torched. It's happening all over the world, but they're not talking about it. But there you, you go on any, near any mosque, yeah, and even touch the wall, see what happened. They set fire to the whole country for months, yeah. They're using us as a, as a useful idiot. Nothing else. Hmm? I'm just giving you example after example after example of what their book has ordered these people. So if you think, if you really think, you can de-radicalize these people, then good luck to you. You cannot de-radicalize because if the guy believes in this book, he is following it, he's been told to do so. Absolutely. You can't find a pie. There's no way. I don't even think the government wants to radicalize them. That's the sad thing. No, 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 no. 
You see, I told you actually it was a program called um, Silencing Christians, yeah? And again, why did the governments, they love these guys, they they following, they, they want Islam actually in. Oh, is, absolutely. Yeah, because, because what is being said, and I'll give you another example. In here, it says, and from those who say we are Christians, yeah, we took their covenant, but they forgot a portions of what of which they were reminded. So we caused amongst them an immunity and hatred until the day of resurrection. And Allah is going to inform them about what they used to do. Listen, he's talking about created, um, he says that God actually, Allah created hatred between the Christians. Hmm? Can you see the link? Can you see the link with today's life? Yes. We, we supposed to be Christians, yeah? In a Europe, is the land of Christianity, used to be at least. Hmm? And we as the Christians, we are going against each other, hatred, as, as the Quran says, yeah? If each other, the sake of Muslim, the government wants Islam for no reason. No, it's because of all the links and things is in it. They yeah. want to collapse civilization, the government themselves. But there, that is the only thing that I can understand that the government actually wants to collapse the civilization themselves. Yeah. You see, I was, I was. Um, I was looking at the um, this video. I'll send it to you. There are some pictures, for example, even of Pope Francis. Yeah, that he got yeah. a black mark on his left eye, and he shows similar mark on some other celebrities. Yeah, and he says that is the mark of child sacrificial. Yeah, child sacrif sacrificial. Hmm? Why they love Islam? Let me give an example, yeah, and see what is the similarity. Why they they love this religion because it matches everything goes satanic with them. Look at this one. It's the Quran, fifty-two, twenty-two to twenty-four, yeah, and we will provide them with fruit and meat from whatever they desire. They will exchange with one another a cup of wine wine which is haram yeah in this world but is all right they they exchange the wine yeah can we get to the next slide how convenient what, what i'm reading just try to imagine just imagine it in in your make it up in your mind see how does it work yeah wherein result bracket no ill speech or commission of sin yeah there will circulate among them servant, boys, bracket especially for them, yeah, as if they were pearls well put. Can you see here? It, yeah. Imagine it. Actually, the OG, yeah, actually, is the OG party. You got the wine exchange between people, people giving each other wine. And amongst them there are boys like little pearls. Just just yeah? Can you imagine this? So this is what actually happening with these Satanists, with these governmental people. Did you know every year we got ten thousand kids disappear from their homes? Yeah? Yeah. You see, every verses I'm reading here, everything I'm referring to, yeah? And giving us an example. It makes a lot of sense, actually, because there's quite a few children that went missing in Ireland. And it's yeah. like the UK, it's all kind of coming from high up. Yeah. This is all the ground. Yeah, so you're telling me why the governments want these people in? Why they giving up to Islam and Muslims? For these reasons, because it matches it matches everything they doing and they wanting one by one line by line 
and it's up to people to wake up to reality and see what's happening around them. God help us. Absolutely. Listen, Elvis, thank you so much again this week for your time. You give us so much time and so much knowledge. Really, thank you so, so much. I can't thank you enough. And, you know, we really all need to just bloody start educating each other. People don't want to hear it, but they need to hear it because they are in danger. People want to believe it's all a lovely little field and we all dance around fairies and whatever. That's not going to happen. And you know what, I suppose even with me and like I realised that I never knew what evil was until I understood Islam. And like now I understand that it was all around, evil was all around, okay, it wasn't in the form of Islam, but it was like governments and the left were there. Um, but it just was so, I had no idea of that. So when somebody would have told me, I suppose, about Islam, I suppose now, like now that I, it's taken me a journey to understand it, but at the beginning I probably wouldn't have believed them. I can understand that because if you don't know any evil and you don't know, you see any bad, your life, particularly for countries like, you know, Norway and all those lovely countries that have never seen any crime or never seen anything. They've grown up in this beautiful country where everything was safe and everything was lovely. You have no idea of violence or crime or anything that could exist because yeah. you've never seen anything like that. So even for me, the Bible didn't make sense until I got to understand Islam because for me, it was like when they were talking about the devil and bad things, it was like, well, I, I don't understand. Like, this is just ridiculous. This is a crazy story. Mm. Because we've never seen or experienced anything to match what, what, what they're talking about. But now it all makes sense. You see, and as the Bible comes we, back to me. We all learn. Yeah, we all learning. Mm? We don't know everything. But if... For example, people like me, people like you, helping to wake up people who are suffering at the moment, right? To their reality, to what's happening. And they ignore, then that is not on. It has been said, those who don't learn from the history are doomed to repeat it. And that is what's if, happening. Adam, if you learn... If you learn, if you listen, is fine. But if you've been told what's happening, give you examples, yeah, and you ignore it, then sorry, you are doomed to repeat it and you are doomed to suffer. And this is what's happening to the people of Europe at the moment. Not only Europe, even Australia, even America, they, they are suffering, yeah? Yeah. So... People are forgetting how yeah. easy, you see, suppose that it's our forefathers who had to fight for the civilization. So it's so long ago that people don't have a memory and the history has been stopped being thought about how they had to get civilization, yeah. what they had to give up and what they had to fight and how they had to die to get the land that we have. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, Elvis, thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show thank and you. we'll speak to you thank next you. week. Thanks a million. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you so bye. much. Thanks a million. Talk to you next week. Bye bye, Elvin. Thank bye you. Bye. Listening to Irish News Radio at irishnews.net. Email news at irishnews.net.